is better. Hello, it is DIY Guy123 here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. Today we're gonna be troubleshooting the charging system on a small four-stroke engine. This happens to be a generator, gasoline power generator. But what I'm gonna to talk to you about today applies to any lawn tractor with a four-cycle engine, any uh, rototiller, any kind of a push mower, anything that has uh, an electric starter on it that requires a battery to be charged by the motor, this will help you. When I bought this generator, the guy said, oh, I think it needs a new battery. And when I looked at it, all the liquid in the battery, the acid and distilled water mix was basically, there wasn't any liquid in it. So the battery had been overcharged. And that can happen because someone leaves on a manual charger too long or a fault in the charging system. So I topped it up with distilled water and charged it up with an automatic charger. And once it reached, well, it had a float voltage of, or a, a, you know, a disconnected from the charger voltage of like 12.5 volts, something like that. And I put it up here. It just didn't have the current capacity to, to start this engine. So I do believe the battery is faulty, but why is it faulty? Well, when I boost this with a car battery to get the thing started, the generating system that, that charges the battery is supposed to charge anywhere I know they call it a 12 volt battery, but you can't charge a 12 volt battery at 12 volts. You have to actually apply a higher voltage to overcome the natural resistance of the battery and trigger the chemical reaction inside to charge it. In this case, I was seeing up to 16 volts and that should never happen on a battery. And what happens is if you apply that kind of voltage, it boils all the liquid out of, hit, out of here and damages the battery. So why is this happening? Well, the charging system is pretty basic on these. There's an alternator and in this case, it's a single phase alternator. Many older motorcycles and ATVs I worked on years and years ago had a three phase alternator, but this is a single phase alternator, which means it has two wires that come out of the alternator. In this case, they're the green wires. And they connect to this voltage rectifier, which changes instead of AC voltage that's operating in a sine wave, it takes the bottom part of the AC wave and flips it up top so you have pulses. And they're DC pulses, but they're not smooth DC, they're pulses. And also in here, there should be a regulator which takes those pulses and makes them a flat voltage anywhere from 13.8 to 14 and a half volts, somewhere in there. So the fact that that's overcharging tells me that this regulator is faulty. Now this piece that I'm touching has the voltage rectifier regulator in it and it also has other stuff related to, I don't know, something to do with ignition. So I can't just simply take this away and replace it with a new one um, unless I get the exact kind that handles whatever this other circuitry is. So instead, I have bought this. Now this is, a, is an aftermarket rectifier regulator built in it was 20 bucks and uh, free shipping. If you look at the size of this right here versus the size of that, this will have a much greater heat dissipation capability than the original. And that's generally what kills electronics like this, especially in a charging system, is overheating. So really, I think this is going to do a great job to resolve the problem. Just as an aside, if you have the opposite problem where your battery's not charging at all, check your fuses, because there's a, actually an inline fuse that uh, could be blown in this system. And also, um, maybe it's your alternator and not your rectifier regulator. And to do that, you disconnect the two wires that come from your alternator and check the AC voltage on those when you're running. And I don't know what this alternator uh, should be putting out for voltage, uh, but I know three-phase motorcycles, 5,000 RPM back in the day in the 90s, you know, 5, 000, uh, uh, 50 to 75 volts AC is what you were looking for. And, uh, and that would get rectified and regulated down to, down to you know, 13 and a half. So if you don't get more than say 25 or 20 volts AC out of this, it's probably an alternator problem. Don't take my word for it. If people know what they would recommend for a, an AC voltage out of an alternator, please post in the comments. And because I'd, I'd hate for somebody to replace an alternator based on my guess at what a charging voltage should be on a single phase alternator. But anyway, so, what I'm gonna do now is since I'm feeling confident this is a problem, I'm gonna disconnect the alternator and I'm gonna connect it to the wires that go here. Now, what do these wires do?
So I've got my new rectifier and regulator all in one. I've taken the green wire from there and run it to a bolt that goes to the block. So that would be my common. The yellow and pink wires from the new rectifier regulator go to my two green wires that come out of my alternator. And my red wire is just temporarily clamped onto the original wire that feeds the battery. It's black with white in this case, and it feeds the battery. This jumper cable is just hanging there. The only reason why it's there is for the holding the red onto there. Um, and I have my voltmeter set up, my weak old batteries at 11.9 volts, and um, I'm gonna boost the, the machine and get it started. And Okay, so as we've seen here, uh, I showed you the runtime meter on the generator. It was running for five full minutes, and the voltage rose when I first started from 12 and a half, 13, 14, up to 14.7 and stayed there, and it never went about above 14.72. Uh, so that's a, a healthy voltage to charge a 12 volt battery. Uh, it's way better than the 16 volts that I was seeing before. There's really, I know it doesn't sound like a great, like, Percentage wise, it's not a lot different, maybe 10% less, but that difference in voltage makes a difference between destroying a battery and fully charging it. The, uh, now that I've proven this works, I'm uh, actually gonna cut the lead off of uh, the factory connector right here and solder these together. It's always better to have a soldered connection than a plug-in connection. And also, I'm gonna pull this plug apart and put dielectric grease in here the same way I did these other connections so that there's just the best chance of having a healthy connection you can have. And you know, for 20 bucks, I'm not expecting this to be uh, a high, high end part. These are all inexpensively made with, with cheap parts. And so what makes you think the your factory original was a high end part? It probably wasn't any better than this. And if it does go bad for 20 bucks, I can unplug it here and plug a new one in. So this is my uh, successful repair. And I hope that you learned a few things. Certainly this was to solve an overvoltage condition, but some of the steps in here could help you if you're trying to diagnose an undervoltage or an undercharging condition. Good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. If you like my videos, please subscribe.